Hi guys and welcome. We are in uh, Calc, I think this is 2.4. We're talking today about tangent and normal lines. We couldn't talk about these until we discovered how to find that derivative. So now that we've talked about basic derivative rules, we're going to apply that to the tangent and normal lines. So some information, you know, here's our uh, learning objective for from College Board. Uh, you have to be able to solve problems involving slopes of tangents and slope of normal lines. So just a little bit of review, what kind of information do you need to write the equation of a line? Just go back to like standard linear lines. What is some information that you guys like to have every time you write that line? Well, you'll like a Y, you usually like an X, and you, uh, sorry, Y, X, um, you like a slope. And standard, traditionally, you'll also like a B value, right? You knew that Y is equal to MX plus B. However, we're going to move away from point slope form and we're going to talk about slope intercept form. Sorry, other way around. We're going to talk, go away from slope intercept form to talk about point slope form. And for point slope form, you don't need that B intercept anymore. All you need is a Y value, your slope, and some X value. And so as long as you know um, those three points, Excuse me. As long as you know those three points, you can write any line in point slope form. So make sure you memorize this formula. This is what you're going to be using. We're no longer dealing with y equals mx plus b. Um, hopefully in your pre-color algebra two, you've seen this at some point, but this is our standard formula that we will be using from here till the end. But what exactly is a tangent and a normal line? Well, tangent lines are simply lines that hit a curve at exactly one point. Remember, last time we also talked about secant lines, which hits at two points. But why are we specifically talking about tangent lines? Well, when I look at a tangent line, I can figure out instantaneous rate of change. And isn't that what we call the derivative? What's a normal line? A normal line is simply perpendicular to our tangent line. So that just means that everything else kind of stays the same. The only thing that's different is our slope. And perpendicular slopes are negative reciprocal. So as you can see here, if I want the slope of my normal line, then that's going to be equal to the negative reciprocal. So one over the original slope, the slope of the tangent line. Okay, some three, the, some things that you need to know about tangent and normal lines is you really only need three things. In every tangent normal line equation, you're really breaking it down to three things. You're looking for an x, a y, and a slope. But really, we know that slope is going to be our derivative, right? My derivative is my slope. So my m has to actually be f prime or y prime or whatever uh, your function is going to be called. Your x's, because they are independent, can be used in either uh, your function, like in f, or it can be used in your derivative, f prime. However, to clarify, x can be found in either formula. But y can only be found using the function. Slope can only be found using the derivative. And then again, I, I rewrote our normal slope down here just as a reminder of what that is. So I have an example. I'm going to go ahead and just dive on in so that maybe y'all can pick up on what I'm, I'm throwing down just by watching. So again, the three main things that I want is going to be x, y, and slope. And it's asking me for the normal line too. So we're really looking for the slope of the normal line as well. So just as a repeat, I'm going to kind of, I'm going to, in the future, I'm just going to write x, y, m. But right here, I'm going to go ahead and tell you, like, this is just my x. But what is y? y is f of x. And what is m? f is f prime of x. So that must mean this is negative 1 over f prime of x. But instead of x, what value could I have been putting in this whole time? That negative 1. So I do know... Uh, let's just write it underneath. This is negative 1. And then I can go ahead and figure out what f of negative 1 is by plugging that in to the original equation. That becomes 4 times negative 1 cubed minus 5 times negative 1 plus 3. Negative 1 cubed comes back as a negative. Negative times a negative times a negative. So that becomes negative 4. Negative 5 times negative 1 becomes positive 5 plus 3. Well, through negative 4 plus 5 is 1. 1 plus 4 or 1 plus 3 is... Four. So this means f of negative 1 equals 4. Well, what did I tell you that's going to actually be? That's my y value. So I'm going to go ahead and add that on. The next thing we want to do is figure out f prime of negative 1. Well, in order to figure out f prime of negative 1, I first have to pause and ask myself, what is f prime? So if this is my f of x, I'm going to go ahead 
and figure out f prime of x. And you should be able to do this at this point because this, if I broke this down, that's a constant multiple rule. This is the power rule. This is a sum and difference. Again, a constant multiple. That's technically a power. And here we have a constant by itself, a sum and difference as well. So as you can see, we have all those rules that we discussed in unit 2.3. So this becomes 12x squared minus 5. I don't need anything else after that. So if I apply f prime of negative 1, that means I'm just going to plug that in. 12 times, don't drag down, negative 1 squared minus 5. Well, negative 1 squared is simply a positive 1. So that becomes 12 minus 5, which is just 7. So that's our slope. And I don't need to take all this and plug it in with a reciprocal. I can literally just take that 7 and say that's negative 1 over 7. So now I have four bits of information. Shh. You're okay. Now I have four bits of information. Kisei. Kisei. Okay, sorry about that. Now I have four bits of information. <laughs> and in those four bits of information, I am going to, I am going to, come here, come here. Well, then will you shush? Can you be quiet? Can you be quiet? You can be quiet? Are you sure? I'm sorry about that, guys. I don't mean for her to get in the way, but I'm going to write my original, that uh, slope intercept form. Sorry, point slope form. I keep saying the wrong words, but I know what I'm trying to say. Okay, my y minus y1, and this is what we're going to change, is equal to m, and we're going to change that, times x minus that, and that's what we're going to change. So I know my y1 is 4, so that actually becomes y minus 4. I know my original slope is 7, and I know x minus my negative 1. So x minus a negative 1 would actually just be x plus 1. If I wanted, I could bring that 4 over. But this is our tangent line. And then if I wanted the normal slope, I literally write the same equation, y minus 4 is equal to. And all I change is that m. So this is going to be negative 1 7th times x plus 1. And there we have it, the normal line and the tangent line. Okay, And that's really all we're doing today. This is the main thing. I'll connect it back to the AP exam uh, in class, but right here, that's all you really have to know. So I've got a few more examples. I think I've got five examples total. So we've got example two using the table below. So here, okay, the moment we have a table, the moment we have a graph, we should be so grateful that we don't have that original function that we have to deal with because if they've given us a table, that means they've given us half of our work already done for us. So again, the only things I really need to know, what are we doing? We're doing tangent and normal. Okay, so the only things I really have to know are x, y, m, and technically my normal, but we know that that's going to be a little bit easier because we just take that re negative reciprocal. So my x was given, and that's 8. So that means, if we're talking about h of x, that my y is actually going to be h of 8. And my m is my slope should be h prime of 8. And my negative reciprocal should be negative 1 over h prime of 8. So I can come down to my handy dandy table and we've got some extra stuff here. We've got a G and a G prime, which tells me that for this question, at least, I don't need that information yet. It's possible I pulled this from a you know, free response or something where we needed to use G for something else. But it also is possible that it's extraneous bits of information. And that's OK. That's very possible on an EP exam. <coughs> so H of A is 9 h prime of 8 is negative 4 so that means my uh normal length slope has to be negative negative so a positive one fourth so i'm going to go ahead and write my tangent line and then we're going to write our normal line so this becomes y minus my y up here so 9 is equal to my m negative 4 times x minus 8. My I'm normal is going to follow almost exactly the same, but the moment I get to my slope, I'm going to put my negative reciprocal, so that's a positive 1 fourth, x minus 8. And we're done with that example. Okay, here we have example 3. My dog is killing me tonight. I'm so sorry, guys. She's literally just staring into a mirror and barking at herself. No one else, just herself. So using the table below, find the equations of the lines tangent and normal. But we are given, if we know that h of x, 
Okay, we're looking for the information about h of x, but we are given this little formula right here. So just to start off, I'm going to take a moment and figure out what h of negative 2 is going to be and what h prime of negative 2 is going to be. Well, h of negative 2 is simply going to be 3 times f of negative 2. And we know f of negative 2 was given to us right here. So that's going to be 3 times 3, which is just 9. But my f 